Hi everyone, welcome to the sew along video tutorial for my fourth design for Nomi patterns, the ME2078. This is a sewing pattern for two knit tops. View A is the top with the round sailor collar and a separate tie. And view B, which is the one that I'm wearing right here, features a grommet and lace design detail. These knit tops are super easy to make if you have a serger. It's probably only going to take you about two hours to make from start to finish. In this video, I'm going to show you how to sew view a the version with the sailor collar with the regular home sewing machine so if you don't have a serger yet like me you're gonna find this sewing video tutorial super helpful at the end of the video I'm also gonna show you how to tie the separate tie that comes with the design so let's get started in this video, I am making my top using a double brushed poly spandex knit. This poly spandex knit actually has a lot more drape and flow than I would like it to be, but I just really wanted this bright red and white stripe print and I was willing to give it a try. Ideally, you actually want to use a sturdier knit fabric like a cotton spandex with 95% cotton content to make this top. To make view A of this sewing pattern, cut the following pieces. As always, remember to pay attention to the notches and transfer any important markings onto your fabric pieces. I'm sewing this top together using my vintage home sewing machine. When it comes to sewing knits on a regular home sewing machine, I like to make sure that I use needles specifically designed for knits and a walking foot. Because of how light and slinky this knit fabric is, I ended up applying interfacing along the seams to stabilize the seams for sewing as well. I did this for all the seams of the shirt. Is it tedious? Yes. But sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. For some parts of the top, I use straight stitches, but for the others, I use a small zigzag stitch so the seams remain stretchy during wear. I'll specify the type of stitches that I'm using on the top left-hand corner of the screen. We'll start by applying interfacing to the front neck facing, the back neck facing, and the collar. Next, Sew the front and back neck facing together along the shoulder seams. Trim the seam allowance to about a quarter inch, then finish the raw edge with zigzag stitches. Before moving on to sewing the rest of the bodice together, I also finished the unnotched edge of the facing with zigzag stitches. Now let's put the body of the shirt together. Sew the front and back bodice pieces right sides together along the shoulder seams. If you're sewing this with a serger, then all the extra seam allowance gets trimmed off while you sew. If you're sewing this with a regular sewing machine like me, you'll have to work the extra steps of trimming the seam allowance to about a quarter inch and then finishing the seam with zigzag stitches just like I did in the previous step. So you kind of see me repeating this throughout this entire project. Next, we're going to attach the sleeves to the bodice. Place your bodice front and back flat on your table, then pin the sleeves along the armhole, matching the seams together at the notches and the small circles. You're going to have to clip the seam allowance along the armhole of the bodice so the sleeve cap will fit nicely with the armhole. When you're ready, sew the sleeves in place, then trim and finish the seam allowance again just like before. Before we move on, we need to sew the collar together. Place the collar pieces right sides together and sew all along the unnotched edge. Before turning the collar right sides out, grade the seam allowance by trimming just one layer away and then clip the seam allowance so when you turn the collar right sides out, the seam will lay nice and flat without any puckering. Next, understitch all along the seam. Now we're going to attach the neck facing pieces and the collar to the neckline. Start by basing the collar to the neckline, wrong side of the collar to the right side of the bodice. You want to use the notches and the markings to help you match up the raw edge of the collar with the neckline. 
And over here, I'm sewing the collar to the neckline with a 4 8 inch seam allowance. Next, pin the neck facing on the collar, right side of the facing, to the right side of the collar. Use the notches and small circles to line up the neck facing with the bodice once again. Once you have the neck facing lined up with the bodice, sew the neck facing in place. To make sure that I get a nice and clean V neckline, I like to mark the tip of the V with the fabric marker before sewing. Then when sewing, I pivot to my work and finally I clip the seam allowance in the V neckline so there won't be any puckering in the neckline later. When you're done, remove bulk from the seam allowance by trimming off the seam allowance and over here I am actually just trimming off the seam allowance off the collar piece. Clip the seam allowance and then understitch the facing. Can you believe that we're almost done? Next, sew the bodice together along the side seams and the underarm seams. Over here, I'm sewing the side seams in sections so I can make sure that the stripes along the side seams will match up nicely. Again, trim the seam allowance and finish the seam with zigzag stitches just like before and then sew the sleeve hem and the bodice hem in place. You can do this with a twin needle or a cover stitch machine. Unfortunately, <laughs> I'm just working with what I have. So over here, I am using the same small zigzag stitch to do this step. Finally, sew the ties right sides together, leaving a 4 inch wide opening for turning the tie inside out. Trim the seam allowance at the ends of the tie so they will turn out nice and sharp. And yeah, finally turn it right side out with the help of a loop turner. You can sew the opening close by edge stitching or sewing the ladder stitch by hand. You know how much I like a clean and visible finish, so I chose to hand sew the opening close over here. And that's it, you're done! Personally, I think the tie looks best when you tie it together with a square knot on the front like this. Tying this knot is super easy, just remember left over right, right over left. So we take the left side of the tie, we bring it over, under, and through the right side. Then with the end that is now in your right hand, loop it under and over the left and pull the end through the loop. You also need to kind of pull both ends slowly and adjust the shape of the square knot as you go. I promise you, it definitely gets easier with practice. I'm only this good at tying a square knot on a scarf because I was a brownie. There are also a lot of different ways for you to wear the tie. You can secure it with the ring. You can also pin it together with your favorite brooch on the front. And to shake things up, you can even wear your favorite silk scarf under the sailor collar or even pin a sailor bowl on the front. And you've guessed it, the last version is my favorite way to wear this sailor inspired top. I hope you'll enjoy sewing and making this sailor inspired top for spring. I know I will be going all out with my sailor inspired style this spring. So follow my sewing channel for more sewing and style content and I will see you in the next one. Bye!